Nix has been a trendy OS in the Linux world lately. If you haven't heard of it, NixOS is a GNU Linux distribution with a different philosophy than your average operating system. Instead of packages being installed and configured one by one, NixOS utilizes a single file for your whole system setup, configuration.nix. This seems like a dream desktop, right? Well, I should point out that I tried NixOS on my workstation for a few days, but eventually moved away for reasons that will become more apparent as the video goes on. Starting off, let's boot into the live CD. The website gives you the option for a GNOME KDE one while recommending the former be used. That struck me as weird, it's just a desktop environment. Plus, on the target system itself, they give you the option to choose anything you want since it's a net medium, meaning that it downloads packages from the internet rather than serve them from the live CD. Note that the guided GUI installer is a new addition, it wasn't there a couple of years ago. Anyways, the installation went quite smooth. On the first boot we can see a vanilla GNOME desktop. I always appreciate distros which avoid theming their desktop environments too much. Why the heck is that font so damn small? Time to take a look at our default configuration. NixOS is a very minimal by default, which you can see from this seemingly short config file. Here is the font section where you define which packages we want installed. In order to switch to the new configuration, we type in this command. Note that it keeps past configurations as usable rollback images. As you can see, Vim works fine. Let's try installing something else, say NeoFetch. A new boot entry is present in Grub now for its new configuration. Why don't I reset the one before installing NeoFetch? Works exactly as expected. Searching for other packages from NixOS's website is quite easy and with a very intuitive UI. The whole system is pinned back to 23.11, which is a static release, think of it like uh, Ubuntu. You can even see the infamous exe being held back. Yeah, we're talking about that exe. We can also do other stuff from this global file. A lot of system administration is possible, including enabling services, creating users or groups, adjusting package options, even opening ports on a firewall. It's generally a very fun environment to navigate and try to customize to your liking. However, in the start of the presentation, I said how I moved away from it. Starting from the least significant, I tried to install Steam like this. Turns out some programs are packaged in a special way by the developers and have to be installed differently. Why is that? To achieve the NixOS philosophy in practice, the system has to be dynamically generated. During that process, a lot of weird library linking and other hacks are used which I am not familiar with. That brings me to how NixOS is not FHS compatible. That means that a lot of traditionally compiled Linux binaries won't run without extra configuration and a lot of headaches. In my years of using Linux, I've never used the package manager slower than Fedora's DNF. DNF is not inherently slow, just slower than other package managers I've used. Well, that's something I cannot say about Nix. I understand how it has to rebuild a lot of core system pieces when doing operations as simple as installing a program. For those of you who don't know, Spicetify is an unofficial Spotify plugin that helps you customize it easily by injecting themes and plugins. Let's give it a try, shall we? Never mind. I think this is a perfect way to illustrate how NixOS places binaries. You can see how they just get thrown in a randomized directory. Yes, the same even applies to the system tools. This thing alone shows how unconventional the layout of NixOS is and why a lot of software has to be sandboxed to even run properly. And for the record, 
Yes, I do know that you can do stuff like use flakes and make some massive config file to install a single program. People might try to do stuff like that, but it just isn't for me, honestly. While I appreciate the philosophy behind Nix, I don't like how it's done in practice, as it interferes with my workflow a lot. However, that doesn't mean it won't fit you. Let me show you some other cool stuff it has. We saw how the configuration.nix file defines system-wide preferences. There is a program called Home Manager that takes this concept to your dot files. Another thing you could look into are my dreaded flakes, which I avoided at all costs. Maybe they are for you, you never know unless you try. Overall, if you don't mind the problems I found or are willing to change your habits by a lot, NixOS might be for you. Resources are quite scarce, however, I found a forum to have a lot of useful information and heard that there also exists an unofficial Discord with nice individuals in it. You could give that a try too. All links will be at the description below by the way. Well, until the next one, stay safe everyone.